When God made Neil Young, he gave him a voice, an audible, uniquely altoish physical voice, and also an authoritative voice, which has led and convicted and energized his listeners for decades. When God made Neil Young, he gave him vision. He gave him the ability to see with his two eyes, but he also gave him the ability to perceive and to know the truth. To see when th things were wrong, when a war was wrong, in Vietnam or other wars, when drugs or injustice or things in the family or consumerism or environment, when those things have gone wrong, Neil was able to sing and see them. And to see when things were right, with hope-filled eyes, to see beauty and to dream about what things might one day be. When the idea of preaching Neil Young first showed up, three people talking to me about it on a plane and a thing in Washington and here in Calgary all within two days, I uh, started to think about who he was and what I knew of who he was, and the first thing that came to my mind was prophet. The piercing glare of the young Neil Young, the anguished heart, the incredible intensity, and the sharp, biting lyrics all just had this prophetic sense to them. And so much of his music has this laid bare, looking straight at you, saying it like it is, kind of rawness. It's that kind of music that just gets into your face and makes you listen to what it has to say, and often causes you to shuffle a bit in your seat with its unsettling truth. So the biting, convicting side of Neil Young was always there, but also there was this other side. And I never really understood that other side until somebody in our research planning meeting said, yeah, he's got all of that, but he's also got this other stuff where he just sings a song about seemingly nothing and yet paints this beautiful picture of reality, a moment in his life that seems to resonate so deeply when we hear him sing it and describe it. And as that person was describing that, yeah, but, I said, but it's not a yeah, but when it comes to prophecy, not the biblical understanding of prophecy. Prophets were people who saw what God saw, which often saw things that needed to be fixed and that were broken and that required conviction, but just as much and maybe more so saw things that were beautiful and wonderful parts of God's creation that, that ought to be seen and celebrated and taken note of. That's prophetic too. Prophets weren't just people who told the future. There was a future-telling part of what prophecy was in the Bible and is today, but they also told the present. They exegeted reality and showed it to us. And they often convicted, but they also provided such beautiful pictures and dreams of hope. There was often a very tender and reverent beauty in what prophecies conveyed. This week I read a book called The Prophetic Imagination, an old, old theology text written by a guy named Dr. Walter Brueggemann, and he offered a definition of what a prophet did in the Bible and said this, the task of prophetic ministry is to nurture, nourish, and evoke a consciousness and perception alternative to the consciousness and perception of the dominant culture around us. It's to say, yeah, but to reality and say, there's another reality. Prophets are called to wake people up to say, hey, there's way more to this existence that you're living right now than you can even imagine or see. Look over here. See those birds over there. Look at that bike and that river down by downtown. Open your eyes and unplug your ears. Look at the person beside you that you came here with. Listen to the birds. And whether that waking involves facing up to the wrong or the broken or the sinful in life, 
or if it's just about seeing and grasping and realizing the right and the true and the beautiful, both are part of the prophetic task, and both are what, what God wants for you, for me, for all of us. Wake up. Look, notice, listen. Cranes know when it's time to move south for the winter. And robins, warblers, and bluebirds know when it's time to come back again. But my people, says God, my people know nothing, not the first thing of God and his rule, said the prophet Jeremiah. The birds, he says, are a messenger to mankind, said the prophet Neil Young in an interview last September. Prophets see what God sees, and they feel what God feels, and they say what God needs said. Did God give you the gift of compassion to help your fellow man? Did he give us the gift of love to say who we could choose? At one point in the book, The Prophetic Imagination, uh, something really struck me. And the author was talking about the prophetic role to, he said, you have to criticize, but you also have to energize. You have to point out where things are broken, but you have to give them a picture of hope of where things can be and will one day be. And he was talking about the criticizing part of criticizing dominant culture, exposing the wrong. And he said, real criticism begins with grieving. He said, grieving is the first criticism that happens in our hearts when we look at young kids coming back in, in coffins from the war in Iraq or Afghanistan, and we, we cry, and something inside of us says, it's not right, this is wrong, and we grieve. When we see a marriage bust up, when we see kids go in bad directions, when we see and experience illness and all kinds of other societal breakage, grieving is the first criticism against that. So prophetic criticism, despite my stereotype and maybe yours, is not really an anger thing. It's an anguish thing. You're mad at the wrong because you love the right so much. Injustice hurts because justice is so good and so true and so needed and so beautiful. God loves his world and loves justice, loves freedom, loves seeing whole, complete, the way they were meant to be human beings, living out those kinds of lives in beautiful ways. And when Neil Young expresses those same sentiments on the conviction side and on the beauty hope side, he is prophetically expressing the heart of God, whether he knows it or not. And he has to know it to some degree to, to carry that much truth and beauty for so long. And yet you get a sense he's still trying to figure out who that God is. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a new road through the desert. Rivers, new rivers, new greenness, new beauty, new water, new quenching of thirst in the badlands. Let's pray. Help us to see the newness, uh, Jesus. By your Spirit, uh, wake up our hearts and remove the calluses and the, the hard-heartedness and the stone-like tendencies that tend to calcify our perceptions of you and harden us in our understanding of truth and, and lead us to become intransigent in terms of thinking we know our place and who we are. And all of the lies and the attendant deception um, that come with that. Uh, cut that away so that we can be unburdened so that we can be free, so that we can fly, so that your name could be proclaimed, so that God's image can be wonderfully and beautifully reflected in faith communities, in us. 
we pray in Christ's name. Amen.